Hello, hello again. Um, I hope some people joined over from part one of the session, uh, but for those of you who are new, hello, my name is Yoncha. Um, I am your host for this Harasses Young Visionary session. Uh, this is a panel, a virtual reception. It should have been a reception in Cascais at a global meeting, but uh, for obvious reasons uh, that did not happen. But I'm very happy to have these um, one, two, three, four, six. We're still missing somebody. I hope she'll manage to uh, log in. Um, and I would like to uh, start by saying so this is an exploratory exploratory session um, for uh, what a harasses young visionaries community could look like. Um, we have some ideas on that. We're also thinking of a fellowship. But in order to get those ideas more clearly, we have invited uh, some very enthusiastic and engaged uh, mission-driven entrepreneurs and young leaders. And um, we will introduce ourselves and then we have some questions for you. Um, Nathan, would you like to start? Hi, everyone. I'm Nathan Williams. I'm the founder and CEO of MindSpider. So we're using blockchain technology to do supply chain traceability, to uh, make sure that you know that companies can know where their raw materials are coming from and under what conditions they're produced. We're, I'm based in Berlin, Germany. Nice to be here. Thank you. Very good timing. Thank you. <laughs> and would you like to? Absolutely. Hi, everybody. My name is Anne Coquette. I'm the founder and CEO of The Guild. And The Guild is a global community for female entrepreneurs, investors, and innovators to learn and to connect and to grow together. So we do that through our community platform, through events, through educational resources, but also through the power of AI, where we make very curated introductions. I come from a background of corporate innovation. I've done that at Genentech in the digital health space, uh, also telecommunication, and I've done a few startups, sold a few. And my passion really is in prototyping and bringing new ideas to the world. And I love building community. I've done that in a few different roles. I've done it for a nonprofit organization in based in San Francisco with 30 chapters all over the world. And I'm now doing that for the guild as well. And my big uh, motto is, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that's why I'm here today. Thank you very much. Um, Yash, you want to take the mic? Hello, Yash. Is it working? Okay, we'll skip Yash for now. Do you want to take it, uh, Kartik? Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tatek Sharma. I run an organization uh, called Ignitio, and where our focus areas are, and I, I think I'm in good company, our focus areas are artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotic process automation, and, uh, you know, chatbots. And, uh, you know, I strongly believe that some of these technologies we not only use for enterprises uh, through our products, but we also uh, believe in empowering young people to, to future-proof them by educating them on these technologies. So a big focus for us is to to train young people, do certification programs on emerging yeah. technologies. Hello, everyone. And, you, you know, so I was reading this support. report. Uh, uh, you know, I was reading this uh, OECD report a couple of weeks back in which uh, it was mentioned that almost 30% of workforce needs to be uh, upskilled and be prepared for AI in the next 10 years. Otherwise, those jobs are going to be you know, made redundant. So I think that's a strong driving uh, force for me that how we can future proof our workforce and uh, not fear, you know, because I hear a lot of debates around AI is going to take up the job and, you know, uh, it's going to be the greatest enemy or nemesis uh, for the mankind. But I think the, the debate is more around people who know AI versus people who don't know AI rather than AI versus uh, humanity. And with these causes, you know, I also set up an international School of AI in the UK and you know we train young people school students high school students and you know empower them on hands-on experiments and make them uh, workforce ready on AI and IoT so that's what I do 
Thank you very much. Do you want to try now, Yash? Sure. I'm not sure if I'm audible. Yes. Uh, yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, apologies for the technical error. So I come from Mumbai, India. We are into manufacturing of biodegradable alternatives of single-use plastic. So we manufacture paper straws, disposable wooden cutleries, and we've been almost re reducing the plastic waste by around 950 kgs per day. And it's a small startup which just started off 15 months ago. Uh, though we've been ventured into the European markets now. We've got a regional office in the Germany for the European markets and for the North American markets, it's in the Mexico. So I'm really looking forward to being a part of this panel and helping the change that I'm looking forward with the vision of BioPapro. Thank you. And uh, Navdeep? Hi, uh, I'm Navdeep. I am a political analyst based out of New Delhi. And I run a small organization by the name of iStrat CA, which uh, mainly works in the area of uh, crafting election campaigns and uh, designing outreach programs for governments and political parties. Uh, but prior to this, I've uh, also had the opportunity of having managed, uh, uh, you know, some of the most exciting assembly and general election campaigns. Um, I've uh, also been part of uh, the organizational structure of uh, Bharatiya Janata Party, having uh, discharged my duties through multiple roles, in which the last one was uh, as its media head for the state of uh, Rajasthan, which some of you might know is a state in India famous for its palaces and spicy food. Uh, but uh, in the uh, last six, seven months, I've been working uh, on a campaign to create awareness uh, on the need to achieve a reverse trend in migration by strengthening the rural economy. Uh, uh, you know, as we understand that uh, unless we create uh, employment opportunities and strengthen the uh, health and education infrastructure in the rural rural areas, the problem of uh, migration cannot be stopped, you know. And uh, interestingly, during this pandemic, in uh, one of the lockdowns, our uh, Prime Minister was talking about Atma Nirbhar Bharat, which uh, literally translates to self-reliant India. And I immediately saw the direct correlation between uh, between the two. So I decided to make some tweaks to my existing campaign and uh, I'm now working towards creating an effective plan to implement it. Of course, uh, uh, you know, with the support of the government and some organizations, but uh, effectively so. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Uh, Dasha? Hey, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Darshan Rathod and uh, I'm based out of Pune, India. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Acumen m and Advisors. Uh, we specialize in mergers and acquisitions uh, since more than a decade now and uh, also have a partnership with the US-based M&A firm Woodbridge International. Uh, by qualification, I'm a chartered accountant and I've also done my MBA from uh, Excellent at Jamshedpur, where I was fortunate to be awarded the Open Indel Management Scholarship. Uh, while at XLRI, way back in 2007, I co-founded my first entrepreneurial venture, Parichai. Incidentally, it was also the first venture which was funded by the XLRI Social Entrepreneurship Trust. At Parichai, our vision was to introduce the immense talent from rural India to the world, and uh, we did that by promoting and selling their handicrafts online. This was my first real exposure towards the grave inequality between the urban and the rural India. Although our startup failed, uh, Parichai and their experience had left a significant impact on me. Uh, that apart, uh, while at Jamshedpur, I also led the CII Young Indies chapter in 2008. Uh, and currently, I'm a charter member with Thai Global. Uh, it's a non not for profit or enterprise uh, that fosters and uh, promotes entrepreneurship globally. I also actively invest in and advise socially responsible companies. Uh, one such company is in the services space, uh, employing about 75,000 workers, mostly from rural India. Another one is in responsible pharmaceuticals. One is in explainable AI, and uh, just to name a few. Thank you. Thank you very much. Christina? Uh, first of all, my apologize for the background sound. Uh, I'm, there, I'm at the radio station and we are using the generator, so sorry about that. Um, I'm Christina Noregongoi from Republic Democratic du Congo. And, um, journalist, producer, and trainer for the Congolese Women Media Association, AFEM, the project Mama Radio. And within Mama Radio, I'm in charge of the Young Sexual Health and uh, Savage Project. Uh, Mama Radio is an organization who works for the promotion of women 
and uh, fight against uh, gender-based violence. And uh, I'm also a volunteer in several local and regional organizations. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so now um, I would like to ask you all some questions which can help us get closer to what this uh, community would look like. And I would like to start with you, Christina, uh, by asking you what are you most passionate about and why? And I know you have experience as a fellow. Um, do, can you take some best practices from that fellowship um, that would be interested for us to learn from? Okay, sure. Uh, so I'm particularly motivated and passionate about uh, young youth and women empowerment uh, in terms of sharing information because where I'm coming from, the eastern part of DRC, the lack or absence of information is the basis of uh, discrimination and uh, violation of human rights. Um, also, you should know that with the necessary information, people, especially uh, vulnerable women and youth can advocate or can speak for themselves and they can even innovate, build peace and uh, sustainable development in a way that no one will be left behind. Uh, that's why I'm passionate about um, youth and women empowerment. And um, as a fellow, um, I'm a fellow of several programs, including the Young Africa League initiative and the Moremi, Moremi Initiative for Women's Leadership in Africa. I think um, one of the most uh, best practice about it is the fact that being a fellow, you have opportunity to build networks uh, and more than that, you have opportunity to meet other people from different nationality, different way to think, or even different backgrounds. And that allows you to benefit from resources in terms of sharing information, uh, professional advice, or even if um, a solid reference. And yes, uh, the funny thing, sometimes you don't need to pay for accommodation when you, tra when you want to travel in another country because you have a fellow, uh, you have a friend, and yeah, that kind of stuff. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to ask you, Yash, um, do you have a project in mind uh, that would be great to collaborate on? Uh, well, actually, I have a few projects in mind that can be helped by the Horasis community. And to start off with is something which is really close to me is the ban of single-use plastic, because I personally feel it's something that all of us can do with very small change, with nothing major changes that we as our community can do. It would help the future generations to come in a small change, you know, like plastic straws. It's manufactured in less than a second, consumed in less than 20 minutes and stays for more than 200 years. And one straw said 8 billion people, you know, just a good quote, which uh, really hits me off quite some time is that even after such great education that all the nations around the world, like all of us have, all the countries that we've been able to be part of, you know, like UK, Switzerland, uh, but somehow we are not able to implement that change in a, in a positive manner. Also now with the coronavirus crisis coming into place, the environmentalists, what they've done for a lot of time, which they've been building up is now not going to be of a greater concern because most of the concern would now be on how to save the people, save definitely. Uh, you want to save the lives, you want to save people, but at the same time, you have to make sure that the impact to the environment is sustainable and it can be used. So if all of us can make a pledge or an oath where we say that, okay, let's start with a small vision of our companies, our, our employees, our associates, our partners need to be made sure that we do not use single-use plastic products. We use sustainable products. We manufacture alternatives, not just for paper straws, but also wooden cutleries, which is disposable, made out of birch wood. Then sugarcane waste, food based agro waste products can be converted into a tableware products which can be used in the disposable menus. Now, also with sanitization taking place, people are more concerned about not using the disposable products. They are more, more and more inclined towards using a disposable product. You know, like a, definitely they are more satisfied to use the plastic ones because it's cheaper alternative and the economy is hurt right now. But we as a visionaries, we should think about something in which we can make sure that our community is 
sustainable in a way where we stop using these single use plastic products i like that um, and who or what has helped you the most so far to advance so like ann said uh, earlier you know like if you want to grow go alone uh, you're not going to grow faster so it's the people it's the network it's the community uh, that i've been along with uh, which has helped me support uh, just to start off with it it was my experience in babson babson is all about sustainable lifestyle sustainable living i was doing my masters in entrepreneurship uh, just completed 2 years ago and that's where it all kicked in that you know i had to give back to the society in a way where it's more eco friendly and sustainable where and then eventually it was the chamber of commerce's in in merchants chamber to be specific which gave me a platform and being able to represent the country uh, with the president and the vice president of india to switzerland iceland slovenia and this was just in the last 6 to 8 months uh, that i've been able to portray my vision across and definitely there has been a great change which i've been able to see in the community we started off with just seven people me and my partner nikunj we started off just 15 months ago and now we are almost 125 people working together with the same vision you know uh, so definitely i think overall it's just about a mindset and each and every one of us can change if even if we can change one two people it's going to be a lasting impact thank you thank you yes um i wanted to ask you uh, darshan what is your mission and what has helped you the most advance and if you can dream big what what would help you the most right great uh, thank you uh, thank you ancha uh, so uh, yancha i have often seen uh, women being treated inferior to men uh, also not uncommon to see a lot of hatred uh, towards a particular religion a particular caste or a particular country after all uh, the mainstream media thrives on such polarization uh, we have also seen uh, some global movements lately uh, black lives matter he for she climate change climate china's power grab uh, these are just a few of the numerous problems we are dealing with today Incidentally last week I was reading Harari's book uh, 21 lessons for the 21st century and I was intrigued by the possibility of irrelevance of most of the human race in future uh, you know owing to AI and robotics and I'm sure uh, Karthik will not agree to that but uh, yeah I mean this if at all it happens you know it could lead to a humanity crisis and not just a labor unrest so the problems are many but uh, you know I was wondering you know if there could be a single universal solution to a lot of these problems So what I'm going to talk about here is something that I've learned while I was growing up. So I was born a Jain, uh, and since childhood, I was fortunate to be exposed to the three core principles of Jainism. They call the triple A's: ahimsa, aparigraha, and anekantvad. The first A, ahimsa, means non-violence. Some of you might be aware that India got its freedom from the British by a nationwide non-violent movement. Mahatma Gandhi the father of India was deeply influenced by this concept of ahimsa but ahimsa is beyond peaceful protest or preventing homicide it means compassionate it being compassionate and uh, forgiveness in not just our deeds but also our thoughts and words and towards all living beings and not just human beings now this is the reason why all jains are vegetarians and never play any blood sport we believe that all lives matter be it a human or an animal We also have an annual ritual, interestingly, uh, where we seek forgiveness from those whose feelings we, we may have hurt during the year. It is a liberating feeling, and uh, I must tell uh, everyone must give it a try. And this is the most significant day of the year. We don't have any fireworks, no animal sacrifices, no decorations of peace things, but we seek forgiveness. Now, the second A is a parigraha, which is about non-attachment or non-possessiveness. It is about detaching from our possessions. you know not pamper ourselves on every black friday sale or a billion day sale you know not becoming a, a target of consumer capitalism so these material possessions i'm sure everybody knows they are notorious you know the more we get the more we want right so you know in that what i have learned is i have adopted a policy of replacement so when i buy a shirt i give away one so that i can avoid piling up you know if i buy a car i sell my earlier one it is also not uncommon to see people go blind to the basic values of life in the quest for power and self interest which are psychic possessions so the message of aparigra which which has what it taught me is to declutter myself it's about owning only what we need and it's about respecting the environment which uh, yash very nicely talked about the third a is anekantvad which is non absolutism it talks about the existence of the many sided nature of reality 
it also teaches us to ex- to respect the views of others it's about being in harmony with other faiths races and sexes while i was preparing for this talk yon cha i realized how things subconsciously play on our minds you know interesting to know that today at acumen we have a small team of 12 people but we have a mix of sindhis marathas muslims marwadis hindus and a male female ratio of almost 50 50 and you know interestingly it was not a conscious attempt there was never a bias in the head so the key message of anekantwad it talks about lift and let live so unfortunately these core principles are not yet universally popular because people listen more keenly to someone who is in a position of power or to someone who has an authority or a celebrity if a celebrity starts adopting these uh, principles so for these narratives uh, for these principles actually to gain more popularity what i would want to do uh, through horasis is to build more such narratives so that if i you know like you asked me right i mean if i could dream big and have everybody in the world uh, within my reach i would like famous global speakers all over the world speak about these three core principles and popularize them so we could even teach triple a to kids in schools you know so that at an early age they know the importance of inclusiveness forgiveness and empathy to sum it up yoncha my mission really is to start a global movement you know and maybe i can uh, you know use a hashtag hashtag the non movement to popularize the three non non violence non absolutism and non attachment thank you thank you very much darsha very beautiful um navdeep um do you want to follow um and tell us um a bit about your mission and what would help you advance your mission sure um thank you yoncha uh, considering that uh, now my life's mission is to see a self reliant india in probably next 10 to 15 years i would uh, really like to focus on strengthening some of the areas uh, which i believe could uh, lead to the realization of my mission uh, to give you a quick background india which is already the fifth largest and the fastest growing economy in the world as we all know uh, we still have to address our share of problems uh, to gain self reliance for example uh, the problem of unemployment which of course the government is rightly trying to address by uh, focusing on areas like manufacturing under its uh, flagship program make in india which works uh, works towards making an apt environment for businesses to flourish uh, but we still need more home grown startups uh, by providing them easy access to area specific expertise for it to gain the required moment Uh, for instance uh, on one hand we have the largest and one of the finest armed forces in the world and uh, on the other we are still importing over 90% of the requirement uh, whereas we need to further strengthen our indigenous production to give it the required self reliance uh, thankfully with our government support we now have some very interesting startup taking this vision forward but we still need more support and expertise in the r&d aspect of it see uh, india is very rich in its heritage and culture that uh, even after uh, over 1000 years of uh, persecution and invasion we are still holding tight to our ancient belief system of sanatan dharma which is extremely peaceful and egalitarian in nature but uh, today's india is changing and it not only believes in the non violence theory of uh, mahatma gandhi but also believes in giving an apt uh, apt reply to provocation of any nature but uh, i understand that uh, growth uh, doesn't take shape by squabbling amongst each other but by only exploring new ways to support each other as nations or individuals and uh, especially the young leaderships need to brew uh, relationships across the border to have uh, better coordination in years to come and uh, most importantly to fight the rapid spread of strategic or random misinformation campaigns about each other and uh, therefore i think the world today more than ever needs a global platform which can harness the expertise of exceptional young minds of today for a better tomorrow some place uh, where we can come together to not just meet and greet but uh, get familiar with each other's uh, culture religion politics our policies and most importantly the challenges we face as nations in our growth uh, therefore if i could dream big to realize my mission i would uh, look towards a platform uh, like rasis young visionaries where young thinkers and innovators can come t- 
together from across the world to become problem solvers not just for themselves but for others as well uh, just imagine yoncha that uh, if uh, in an hour and a half with two panels of 45 minutes each uh, my co panelists could expound views and vision of this magnitude then we can only imagine the impact of a two day physical event might have or even a two to three months long well structured leadership program where one also gets an additional opportunity to expand their knowledge base by being mentored by some of the greatest leaders around the world i mean they may be from diverse background but i envision a platform just like this to turn this dream into a reality so to conclude i would uh, like to say that uh, we as a nation have much to give but at the same time a lot to receive as well and uh, if young leaders from across the globe can come together through a platform like horasis i think it will immensely help not only my mission and india's mission but the world's mission of growth and mutual respect so thank you so much yoncha for giving me this opportunity oh, thank you navdeep all of these great ideas um i would like to ask you and um do you have a project in mind uh on which we could collaborate absolutely so i love what i'm hearing so far and uh, there's so many different threats here plastic uh, community building gender equality etc so again if we want to go fast we'll, we'll go alone but if we want to go far we want to go together right and i think this community the horizons visionaries is preparing for a marathon not for a sprint and because of that we need to create really strategic partnerships with all the groups and communities and projects that are already ongoing that we can harness and we can use to grow and the question is how right like how do we do that um well let's define the goals first right we we can't solve all the problems at the same time so i think we really need to understand what we want to achieve and then we need to understand who are the people right now in the world in communities working on projects that we want to bring into this community and a few of those people are on this call already right but we really need to understand our our user and our members that we want to attract and that's just the same as in the startup world right we need to understand our users we need to understand who they are where they are in the world and where they currently engage and once we know where they engage then we can create partnerships with those communities to to really bring them in and to grow this so the question is you know what communities are out there so now i heard a few people speak about the you know, african communities and in your case christina and and plastic and i know the social uh the sustainable oceans alliance for instance that would be great opportunities and communities to bring in um my background is really in gender equality in getting more female entrepreneurs in the innovator ecosystem and so i can speak to that and i can say you know there's some amazing venture capital firms that are really focusing in on that and if we want to build a community here that really reflects gender equality and also brings in diverse people and diverse young innovators and entrepreneurs we have to tie in with them there is amazing smaller funds happening right now that really focus on female entrepreneurs for instance how women invest and we also have angel groups that are very focused on female entrepreneurship i would absolutely recommend to to think about strategic partnerships with those groups like golden seeds or astia angels and of course also international groups i also think vital voices with a group of 20000 female leaders worldwide is an amazing community to think about you know what would a partnership look like with them and last but not least of course the guild my community i would absolutely invite a collaboration with the young horasis visionaries and collaborate on events on content but also on projects where we can cross pollinate ideas of the members that are in our community and bring that into the young visionary community as well i think it's really vital that we create a strategic plan who we want to reach out to why we want to reach out to those people why we want to collaborate with those and then also put measures in place 
and say, okay, what does a successful partnership and project with those groups look like? And um, I've done this for Genentech. I've done this for women in product with a lot of very high profile tech companies. And I've created hundreds of partnerships for the guild from, you know, banks all the way to fashion brands, et cetera. And each one serves a different need, what we, we get from them. And I would very much welcome that we all kind of sit together and do a strategic session to say, what are the partnerships we want to create to grow this community in a certain direction that we're all aligned on? And that's, that's what I hope we're going to do. And I'm very happy to be part of that movement and to bring in my expertise there as well. And last but not least, I want to say, um, I, I recently launched a guild academy where we teach female entrepreneurs at idea stage to launch their businesses. It's a big passion of mine. I didn't know I'm a teacher. And I would say maybe there's a Horace's guild academy in our future where we can focus on the future of work or maybe plastic or sustainability or the environment where we can really teach the young, young entrepreneurs, the next generation how to solve these problems and give them the tools to solve these problems within our community. Thank you, Anne. Spoken as a true entrepreneur. <laughs> um, then uh, I would like to move over to you, Kartik. Um, what is your mission? Uh, what are you most passionate about and which role do you think the network can play for you? Thanks, Yonja. In fact, I might sound a bit patronizing, but I think most of the initiatives and the amazing work which you guys are talking about, I think uh, to help you scale, I think AI could be a, a potential answer. And uh, the reason I say that is because uh, to answer the other question. So I personally feel very strongly about, uh, you know, how AI is already shaping our, our current life all around us. I'm sure you have experienced whether it's, you know, driverless cars or autonomous robots, drones and whatnot. Even in current COVID crisis, some of the top companies who are coming up with solutions, whether it's based on your cuff or scanning your chest or even clinical trials for, for the new drugs, the modeling is done using uh, advanced AI and ML techniques, right? Even if you talk about issues like gender equality or, you know, the big problems, right, which are the UN sustainability development goals, 17 of them, poverty, hunger, education, healthcare, to democratize it, at scale, uh, you know, AI has been used or, or AI has been looked upon even at the UN forum as a potent uh, tool to, to sort of use it, right? Even in India and other parts of the world, AI and IoT enable smart cities are seen as the future way of living, which is more sustainable, uh, more environment friendly. And the, I mean, all sounds very interesting and good, but at the same time, what I really want to focus on, and which is my personal mission as well, is to also talk about some uh, issues when we are imagining a AI propelled future, which is things like AI related ethics and bias, right? Bias can, can creep in through data or through developer. I mean, going a bit technical, right? But in both cases, I mean, you might recollect uh, one of the incident in US, which happened, uh, I think 2017, where the soap dispenser uh, was only dispensing uh, soap to a certain people of a certain color, right? And people thought that it's a racist soap dispenser, but it was using a photo sensor. It was not, it was using a photo sensor. It should have used a motion sensor. So these kind of issues can create a havoc if we are not able to address uh, these issues at, at the root cause, right? Even when we talk about smart cities and how AI or even blockchain, uh, you know, one of my co-panelists talked about when these, uh, or even connected devices, right? Which everybody's talking about when these things operate at scale, we are concentrating and connecting more and more, uh, you know, hardware and software. But in this process, we are also concentrating risk. So, you know, somebody uh, for a few minutes had the entire city. What would that work like, right? I mean, the, we only used to see it in sci-fi movies, but from traffic to electricity to water, everything could be had from by a click of a button by somebody. How do we solve that problem? You know, uh, a wealth inequality, which is a big problem, not only for the bottom billion or bottom two billion as the economists say but even in all the countries wealth inequality is becoming a huge issue which is going to become more and more prevalent uh, you know when uh, monopolistic organizations are going to use ai and they are gonna you know use it at their will 
so how do we control that how do we ensure that the communities which which people like n are building startup entrepreneurs smes how do they get a stay in the economy when you know they would be large companies who would be monopolizing these emerging tech so how we can reduce barriers to entry for them gender bias is a major issue when we are talking about ai related systems you might be aware of how recruitment systems in many fortune 500 companies that use ai and chatbots at scale have embedded uh, you know bias around certain gender stereotypes so how do we solve that you might be aware of or you might have read about this robot right sophia a humanoid which was granted the citizenship of saudi arabia now it was a pr right but what does that translate into on an actual uh, operational level right does she have a passport uh, when she travels she is disassembled right and she gets reassembled does she have any rights if she hits somebody can i sue her in a court of law i mean these are all uh, questions nobody has answers to and uh, you know google and certain organizations you would be aware of they created ethics institute or or to study some of these causes and they wound up in in few months and no sustained dialogue is happening on these issues nobody is even talking about if we talk about covid for example right a lot of companies have come up with ai related pool testing but what happens if it's a case of false positive or false negative who is going to be responsible will the company take the ownership or will the ai system be responsible or will be the person who's distributing it or doing the diagnostic so i think that responsibility accountability bias ethics inequality these conversations are tough conversations and sometimes in the awe and glory of ai i think these get missed out so these are very uh, personally very important to me that we should have a forum to discuss them even uh, you know to, to the point of of darshan about you know job losses or how ai is going to create more mesh i mean i would also want to counter that at a time where unemployment is at all time high across the world ai is probably one of the only industries in which there are more vacancies but we are not able to find suitable people to fill in those roles so it's one industry which has got you know lot of openings available but lack of a skilled manpower so coming on to the second point yoncha what i expect from this community the way i understand is the mission of of rs is is towards sustainability principle leadership and community building and i think categorically in all those three areas we talked about how un sdgs can be solved using ai but we need to be cognizant of 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 issues of ethics and bias when we talk about principle leadership and governance we are aware of how blockchain and ai is being used in countries like estonia for example to create a more transparent governance and more principled leadership how that model can be scaled up into other countries i know the, the scale is is pretty small for a country like estonia but how it can work in a country like india that's something i am very passionate about and i lean on to the support of the community and also uh, you know last but not the least i think i find so many like minded people who can add diversity to these conversations and make sure that the the, the community which we are building in the future which is going to be ai driven is is more inclusive so i think that's the the key part for me that whatever solutions we are looking at in the future are more inclusive and are not discriminatory in any way to any part of the community or or gender or demographic so that's something which i really look forward to to learning from all of you and the larger community at horus thank you very much um and, and last but not least nathan what well, up oh, my question for you um my question for you is very similar what are you most passionate about and who has helped you you know we're dealing with really big and complex problems everyone around the table here has talked about them and this is one of the things that i love being is around the table with people who are dealing with complex global level problems and trying to figure out what's a realistic solution I'm a tech guy. I love dealing with technology. I I I got into blockchain for supply chain because I saw it as a new tool to deal with this old problem. How can we know what we're buying? How can a company know that there wasn't forced labor or child labor uh that went into the parts that they purchased to make their phones or their cars or or their batteries? And what I'm seeing over the past few years that I've been involved with this is that there's a whole movement going on towards transparency 
and responsibility and sustainability. And that's one of the reasons I'm really happy to be around the table with a group like this. Um, it, these problems are going to be very difficult to solve unless we have not just a technology push, not just companies coming in and saying, well, we want to track our materials and we want to know what we're buying. But it's also governments coming in and saying people have the right to know what they're buying. It's uh, international organizations and non-governmental agencies and think tanks coming around saying maybe small businesses need access to the global markets as well. Maybe it's not just the big players who should control this. Maybe it's not 100% private enterprise. And I think that getting those right minds around the table is the beginnings of what's going to solve this. Um, from my perspective, I think that uh, Harassus provides an amazing place where you have this mindset of responsibility and sustainability around the table. Uh, I would love to connect with others who are uh, in these influential positions who are thinking about how we can do big policy changes or how this new blockchain technology can influence or help these technology changes so that it's not only the big players who benefit. You know, uh, um, I, I was sitting recently on a, uh, a work group to create a white paper for a branch of the UN on blockchain interoperability. And the, 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 the thing is with this group is that they, they see the importance of having all of these different players around the table, but government and regulators and the international groups often take a sort of observatory. And what I think is that there's an opportunity for groups like Harassus, like the UN, like the WEF, like the, all of these international groups to take a more active role in providing a space where they can provide guidelines for new technologies to emerge. Instead of saying, well, AI should be, you know, run by uh, small business or big business or, 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 or just letting the market decide it, to say, let's have a forum where a group like Harassus, who has sort of an international cross-border, cross-country global mindset uh, that wants access to everybody, can say, we will support startups who have a similar mindset and who want not just to make a business, but who want to see their business have an impact in the world. Same can be said for uh, blockchain and supply chain. Same can be said for most emerging technologies. And uh, I would love uh, to be involved with uh, Harassus for that reason. Those were some very beautiful words to end on. Um, so what will be uh, the follow-up of our session? Um, I uh, will assemble all of the talks of our... Somebody, Nathan, can you mute? Um, thank you. Um, I will assemble all of the thoughts of our 14 panelists. Thank you to all of you very much. And I will be in touch to uh, verify everything. And then we'll put out um, an overview for everybody to read on uh, what happened in our two panels today. And uh, I would like to ask you all to take a selfie now. <laughs> um, it's like groupie. the virtual groupie. And thank you everybody for watching. Uh, let's try to get this done. <laughs> <laughs> Voila. I don't know if it'll work. Two people finished. Come on, people. Be satisfied with the picture. <laughs> I don't know if it'll have to be uh, under the 40 seconds. Nine people. We have more. <laughs> In, in the picture <laughs> from the panel. Okay, I'm going to I guess the audience can also take it, I guess. Ah, let's see. Ah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to save it. I don't know how it works. I will try to do <laughs> it for you. Uh, thank you all for joining. Have a nice evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. And thank, thank you. you.
Bye. 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 Bye.